The B4 movement, originating from South Korea, has recently gained attention in the United States, particularly following Donald Trump's re-election. The movement is known as the 4B, or Four No's in English, with each of the four Korean words starting with bai, meaning no. Baihan, no heterosexual marriage. Bichulsan, no childbirth. Bionai, no dating. Bisexo, no heterosexual sexual relationships. It emerged in the mid to late 2010s in South Korea as a response to patriarchal norms, gender inequality, and violence against women. It's seen as a radical feminist approach to challenge and opt out from traditional gender roles and societal expectations. And just start talking about this like murder. Not everyone. your beautiful God, hair. Put me in a cab. This is a new Alexis Jones. Oh, do it. Oh, God. You're doing good. You're doing good. Oh, God. He's going to kill me. Put me in a cab. Oh, God. Trump's doing it. Trump's shaving my head. I'm giving up my, my beautiful hair. My beautiful. Oh, God. He's going to kill me. After Trump's victory, which was perceived by some as a referendum on women's rights due to his stances on issues like abortion, American women began discussing and showing interest in adopting the 4B principles as a form of protest against misogyny and perceived rollback of women's rights. Hi guys, this video has been done a few times for me because I'm struggling myself and I know there's others that are struggling as well as of the election results currently. Why yes, every vote still needs to be recounted and everything else. Nothing is officially officially, but it is official. Here's what it is. For everyone that voted for that man, I want nothing to do with you. I'm not going to engage with you. And honestly, like if you leave comments on my page saying Trump 2024, or whatever, that's fine. Cause you're just making it easier for me to figure out who I should be blocking. If you voted for that man, if you voted for anybody other than Kamala and you live and you live in one of the states that it was, you know, close, or if you didn't vote, fuck you. I've literally broken up with a man because he voted for Trump and you can too. It's very easy. Say bye. Toodaloo. Sayonara, bitch. And here's the thing. Any man that's like, oh, that makes sense, you're gonna die alone, da da da. I'm getting married in 11 days, bitch, to a woman. You see that shit? You couldn't afford this ring, even if you tried. Baby, if you wanted to touch my body, you should have voted for it. All I have to say is good luck getting laid. <laughs> um, especially in Florida because me and my girlies are participating in the 4B movement. That's my next plan. Not that my content reaches a lot of men because I have an IQ of 130, but I want the men in this country to know that half the female population, we're dry. We're probably gonna stay dry. I'm dry as a desert, baby. I have decided that my personal revenge for this 2024 election fiasco is to be a menace to men on dating apps. What was this for a motivational phrase? Our resistance will be talked about for generations. Matka movement, the Make Aqua Tafana Great Again, or Matka movement is an internet phenomenon where some women have posted videos or content suggesting or jesting about poisoning men. Drawing from historical references like Aqua Tafana, a poison supposedly used by women to escape abusive relationships in 17th century Sicily, one woman called for the assassination of President Trump, and another woman went as far as to punish men all because they seemed too quiet and too happy after the election. Quick question, so does anybody know how to find or hire a hitman or woman? Um, because we don't want to be sexist. So, but I think we could pull this off collectively. If you want to chip in, DM. Who else has men in their life that are maybe just acting a little too calm right now? That may have voted for Kamala, may have the same views, but are just a little too level-headed. Mark Halperin suggested that if Trump wins, it could lead to what he described as the greatest mental health crisis in the history of the country. 
This statement was based on the idea that many liberals might struggle to cope with Trump's presidency, leading to a widespread questioning of their connection to the nation, other human beings, and their vision for the future. Let's say Trump wins uh-huh. um, three weeks from today. Mm-hmm. What happens? The Democratic Party is, I mean, as you said, um, a lot of Democrats, maybe the majority, believe that Trump becoming president again is the worst thing yeah. that ever could happen. So how do they I, respond to I, that? I say this not flippantly. I think it will be the cause of the greatest mental health crisis in the history of the country. I don't, I think tens of millions of people will question their connection to the, the nation, their connection to other human beings, their connection to uh, their vision of what their future for them and their children could be like. And I think that will be, uh, require an enormous amount of access to mental health professionals. I think it'll lead to uh, 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 trauma in the workplace. I think there'll be some degree of- Are you being protest, serious? Uh, 100% serious. 100% serious. I think there'll be alcoholism. There'll be broken marriages. There'll what? be- What? Yeah. They, they, they think he's the worst person possible to be president. And having one- by the hand of Jim Comey and Fluke in 2016, and then performed in office for four years and denied who won the election last time and January 6th. The fact that under a fair election, America chose by the rules pre agreed to Donald Trump again, I think it will cause the biggest mental health crisis in the history of America. Scott Adams recently described MSNBC as nothing more than a dopamine hit network. He explained that MSNBC's persuasion technique is based off making their audience feel smarter than Trump. So whenever they make fun of Trump and his supporters, it gives their audience a dopamine hit. Unfortunately, their vision of the nation didn't match reality, which will cause severe mental illness after losing the election and realizing they were the dumb ones the entire time. Here's my take. MSNBC is designed as a dopamine source. It's a dopamine source. It's not news. It's things that will feel good to a certain segment of people who are their viewers. So if you want news, you'd find out facts without opinion. If you go to MSNBC, they'll say, let me me explain this to you for the millionth time. You, dear viewer, you are ethical and moral and smart. Oh, you're smart. You care. You have empathy. Unlike, unlike, have you heard about this orange Hitler? Oh, my God. You are so much better than orange Hitler. You're smarter. You're kinder. You have better ideas. You believe in science. That's how awesome you are. And so if I'm watching MSNBC and I'm a little low in my dopamine, I'll be like, really? I I didn't even know I was, was that smart. Can you tell me more about how smart I am? Oh, look, look, half of the country is dumber than me. Ah, Oh, look at the dumb people. Ah, Oh, my God. They're all like weird. They're weird and crazy, but not like us. Not like us. We we got our college educations and we're, 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 we got our, we got our act. Wait, what just happened? What, 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 what just happened? He's he's ahead. No, he can't be ahead. What? He he just won the election. He he couldn't have. No, I've been watching the news for four years. He couldn't. He couldn't have. He couldn't have. He could. He could but, but, no, he, he couldn't have won the election. What? By a landslide. And people are wearing their hats in public. Um, click, and then you turn off MSNBC. Why are you turning it off because their news was not accurate? No, you're turning it off because your source of dopamine went away. (laughs) There's no dopamine. Touching grass is a colloquial expression often used humorously or sarcastically to suggest that someone should step away from their digital devices or online activities and engage with the real world. The reality is that social media tends to show the extreme ends of the political spectrum, and the news media tends to hyper-focus on the extreme spectrums because it generates the most views and most advertisement clicks. 
So go outside and touch some grass, you ass. Have a fantastic day and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more information. Toodaloo.